In the second video of this series, we will talk about algebraic foundations for incremental view maintenance. I'll first uh, give some background on algebra. Uh, a semigroup is a structure consisting of a base set S and an associative binary operation on S. A group is a semigroup that has a neutral element and an inverse. The neutral element, of course, means that uh, there is an element E such that for any element A of S, A of E is the same as E of A and is the same as A. And for every element A, the inverse minus A can be combined with A and always gives me the neutral element. Um, I can talk of commutative semigroups and groups um, if, they, if the operation is commutative. That means A of B is the same as B of A. A ring is a structure uh, with two operations, let's call them plus and multiplication, where plus is a commutative group and multiplication is a semigroup and furthermore the distributive law holds. A commutative ring is a ring where the multiplication is also commutative. In this video, the goal is to create a generalization of relations with a symmetrical plus operation that allows to do both addition and subtraction. So this will be a one clean framework for insertions and deletions. We will not forget that our probably most important curve operation is joins, and we want to have our modified algebra of relations to still behave as expected on joins. So the desired thing is actually to create a ring whose operations generalize union and join, because that will solve all our problems. In particular, uh, such a ring would completely determine delta processing for its two operations. What you're going to create and define is a notion of so-called generalized multiset relations. And uh, I show an example here. So the idea there is that uh, we will have tuples with multiplicities that are coming from a ring, such as the integers. So in the example, I've got two tuples, and the multiplicities are 2 and minus 1. So this will capture databases, which have multiplicities that are positive, insertions, which are also multi databases with multiplicities that are positive, and deletions, where the multiplicities are negative. But we can, using the addition operation, so to say, apply such updates, insertions, and deletions to databases. Or I could think of a database as an insertion of the empty database. We will also have to generalize uh, the union operation, this plus operation, to a group. And for that, we have to make it a total operation. And that means we have to be able to union any two relations, regardless of schema. So we will be able to actually have uh, tuples of mixed schema in this in a single relation. In the example here, I've got a tuple, the first tuple, which has just schema A, and the second tuple that has schema A and B. So formally, we'll define our generalized multiset relations as follows. We will talk of typed tuples, which are partial functions from a vocabulary of column names to data values. So in the example, the first tuple has a schema A, that means it is defined on A and maps the, uh, the column A to 1, and it's not defined on B. Our vocabulary here, let's say, is A and B. The second tuple is defined on both A and B, and maps A to 2 and B to 3. Um, we will uh, talk of general multiset relations, which are functions from type tuples to multiplicities, and these multiplicities will come from a domain of uh, A that is a cumulative ring, uh, such as the integers. So we think of these GMRs as functions, mapping tuples to multiplicities. Um, and conceptually, they are defined on all possible tuples. That's an infinite set of tuples. But we will require that these functions map to uh, non-zero values only in a finite number of tuples. So we can always tabularize and, and store such uh, relations by just storing the non-zero tuples with their multiplicities. So, uh, next, we will define the operations plus and multiplication on such generalized multiset relations. So plus, conceptually, maps any tuple to the sum of the function values of the two relations R and S that we are adding on this tuple. Since any uh, generalized multiset relation is, is, is defined on all possible tuples, this is valid. Of course, if a tuple is conceptually not inside a relation, then the multiplicity is zero. We define the multiplication of two general smart set relations R and S uh, as the convolution product. That means we map any variable, uh, any tuple X, to um, the sum of products of R applied to tuple A times S applied to tuple B, where A and B uh, together join 
to, to get x. That means, in other words, I can project x in ways to get a and b. Now let's look at an example. So uh, we have three relations here, r, s, and t, uh, all generalized multiple relation, relation r we already saw on the previous slide. Now let's add these relations s and t. We can uh, take now any possible tuple and sum up the multiplicities of that tuple in the two relations. Since there is actually no overlap of tuples with non-zero multiplicity in these two relations, I can actually conceptually concatenate these two relations to get the result s plus t. Now let's multiply the relation r with s plus t. Conceptually, we have to apply this uh, operation defined as a convolution product here um, to every possible tuple. We've done this here, here's the result, and uh, there's four tuples that have non-zero multiplicity. The first, mapping a to 1 and c to 5, can be obtained by combining the first tuple of r and the first tuple of s plus t. And the multiplicity is minus 1 times 2, which is minus 2. I can create tuple 1, 3, 5 from the first tuple of r and the second tuple of s plus t, and the multiplicity is minus 1 times 1, which is minus 1. I can create the third tuple of r times s plus t, which is 1, 4, 6, by combining the first tuple of r with the third tuple of s plus t, and the multiplicity here is minus 1 times minus 3, which is 3. Now, it gets interesting for the final tuple, because that I can actually obtain by two ways. I can either combine the second tuple of r with the first tuple of s plus t, or the second tuple of r with the second tuple of s plus t. In both cases, um, there's no inconsistency between the p columns. If I would try to combine the second tuple of r with the uh, third tuple of s plus t, I would have an inconsistency because b3 uh, and b4 do not match. The multiplicity of 2, 3, 5 then is 2 times 2 plus 2 times 1, which is 6. Now, we have obtained a ring of generalized multi set relations. It's a commutative ring with 1. Uh, the 1 element, the neutral element of multiplication, um, is the GMR that maps uh, the nth tuple to 1 and any other tuple to 0. Um, the neutral element of addition, 0, uh, maps any tuple to the multiplicity 0. In the case that our multiplicity domain is the integers set, we actually can prove that uh, the ring we've obtained is the smallest ring that has the properties that all relations are elements and the operations plus and multiplication generalize union and natural join which is actually what we wanted to obtain. So we can call this, this ring the Z relations. And uh, it's actually stronger than just the smallest ring. We can actually show that, in a sense, this ring is unique, and there is no other way of uh, building such a ring that has the properties that uh, union and natural join are generalized. We can talk of polynomial rings. Uh, we can create expressions uh, over our ring uh, using a language of plus, multiplication, constants, which are just constant relations, elements of the ring, and variables, which are relation names. So, for example, if you think of classical uh, polynomials, x squared plus 2xy plus 5y plus 3, it's a bivariate polynomial, we can correspondingly have something like r squared plus crs plus ds plus e, where r and s are relational variables, updatable relations, and C, D, E are constant relations, and of course R squared is a self-join. Now, deltas follow from the ring axioms. So, for example, the delta of alpha plus beta is delta of alpha plus delta of beta. And that follows directly from the definition of the delta. Of course, the delta is alpha plus delta alpha plus beta plus delta beta. It's a new version of alpha plus beta minus the old version of alpha plus beta, which is alpha plus beta. And I can derive delta alpha plus delta beta by simply using uh, associativity, commutativity, and the existence of an inverse, the axioms of a, the additive group, uh, and reformulate and obtain delta alpha plus delta beta. Similarly, the delta of alpha times beta is new version minus old version, and if I apply the distributive law to the new version, I get four terms, of which one is alpha times beta, I remove that, and the remaining three terms are delta alpha times beta plus alpha times delta beta plus delta alpha times delta beta. And finally, if I want to also talk about the inverse elements, the delta of minus alpha is simply minus of delta alpha. That again follows from the group axioms. 
you can observe here that for polynomials of degree uh, greater than zero, um, taking the delta reduces degree by one. Um, and that is the foundation of the efficiency of incremental view maintenance. So how can we see this? The idea is that um, if I, for example, have a relation name, an updatable relation uh, somewhere, um, as an atomic uh, expression in such a, a polynomial, um, then the delta of that relation would have degree zero, while the relation name itself would have degree one. Um, and we can see here that um, if I, for example, take the delta of alpha plus beta, I will only have delta terms and no alpha, no beta anymore. And similarly, if I take the delta of alpha times beta, where I've got two occurrences, alpha times beta, conceptually I've got degree at least two here, um, in the uh, delta expression here, I have only degree one at most, because uh, or degree, degree uh, decreased by one, because either alpha or beta has been uh, replaced by delta alpha or delta beta. Um, so if I had a degree zero, two here, I would have degree one, one, and zero, so an over degree of one for the entire expression. And I can show by induction, so to say then, that really for an, a, a general um, polynomial, the degree of the delta is reduced by at least by, by one. So in summary, we have created a ring of database relations. Uh, the addition generalizes union, the union operation of relational algebra. And we have made it a total operator. That means we can add any two relations using the notion of type doubles. That means we really can build uh, uh, proper algebraic structures in particular rings out of this. Um, we uh, have uh, made addition a group, so uh, a ring in which uh, we have, for example, integer multiplicities. Now, with that, we can make databases in certain lists look all the same in the same, same way. They're all ring elements. Um, for example, I could uh, start with an empty database and define an arbitrary database, database as an insert of a database into a database. Um, and I can think of inserts and deletes to be combined with databases simply by the addition operation. Now, the multiplication generalizes the natural join, and thus uh, even our polynomials already are a kind of useful curl language, which have union and uh, joins and can be combined in any way. Um, and simply because we have a ring, we get deltas for free, and they behave the way we would want them to.